What's going on guys? Drew here, and I am indeed the SDSU EE tutor. Welcome to the video on pipeline and hazards. So one of the problems that typically comes up on the midterm is this guy right here, where you're given this diagram and then you'll be given some code on the side and it'll say it discuss the hazards caused by this code. So to understand this, let's take a quick look at pipeline uh, and what type of hazards we're talking about and then we'll see if we can solve one of these types of problems. So what is pipeline? The clearest example for me that I found was building a car. So if we're building a car you can either you can work on the entire the entire car from start to finish right and then that takes 24 hours and then we can move on to the next car right and we can start this car and do this from start to finish. So if we built three cars, this would be 24 plus 24 plus 24 would be 72 hours, right? We can pipeline the process by breaking it into different stages and working on multiple stages at once to speed this up. So let's break it down into three stages. We've got working on the engine, working on the body, and then working on the paint. So at time one, Right, we can have a crew working on the engine of the first car and then when we move to time two uh, a different crew will be working on the body so the crew that was working on the engine for car one can now work on the engine for car two right, and then if we go to time three a different crew can be working on the paint for car one second crew can be working on the body for car two and then the group working on the engine can start on the third car. So if we break this into different steps, we can speed up the process by working on multiple stages at once. So before, it took 24 hours to build a car, right? And that was times three to get three cars, so this was 72. Now we broke these into eight hour blocks, right? Eight, eight times three is 24. But we did this in 8, 16, 24, 32. We did this in 40 hours. All right, so this is the benefit, is we can speed things up by breaking it into different stages. So for computers, the stages we're taking a look at in class are fetch. So this gets the instruction, decode, reads from registers, execute, this does any math, memory, this reads or writes to memory, write back, this updates the registers and PC update. This updates the program counter. So let's take a look at data hazards. Because we broke this down into multiple stages, the pipeline can cause issues for when we need to read and write different uh, values. Let's take a look at these instructions right here. So initially this move L goes into the fetch stage. Right, and then at time equal to 2, it'll move to the decode. And instruction 2 will move into the fetch. So, and then at time 3, we'd say this thing would move to the execute stage. And 2 would move to the decode. This creates a data hazard. That is not okay is if we look at what's going on here, we're moving a 5 into EAX. The second instruction then moves EAX into EBX. So in this decode stage, this thing needs to read EAX. This is an issue because this instruction hasn't reached the write back stage yet. Right? We said write back writes to registers to reg. So this is when the 5 actually gets moved into EAX. So when we're trying to read EAX here, the 5 isn't in there yet because it happens here. So what we do is we have to delay. We hold the 2 there and we continue executing the first one, so memory, write back. And once this thing has completed the write back stage, then we can read the second instruction. So then 2 can move into decode 
because 5 got moved into EAX. So now we can read EAX and pull the 5 to move it to the EBX. And if you notice, one of the solutions that we had in class was to insert three nopes. All right, so nope, nope, nope. But this should make sense. Is all you're doing is you're stalling your pipeline so that the first instruction can write to the register before the second instruction reads that register. And if you don't have these nopes here, then you're going to have a data hazard. Next we move to control hazards, and these are caused by jump instructions, returns, or calling a function. So if we look at what's going on over here, and we pass these instructions through our pipeline, one would go on the fetch stage, then one would move to decode, and two would move to the fetch stage, and one would move to execute. 2 would move to decode, and 3 would move to the fetch stage. But notice, this is a jump instruction, right? So this compare statement says EAX minus 0. And if this number, EAX minus 0, does not equal 0, then we're going to jump to done. If it does equal 0, we want to increment EAX. Right? But realize, this is math, right? This says EAX minus 0. Math. This happens in the execute stage. So we're not going to know whether we should jump or not until instruction 1 gets through the execute stage right? and is in memory. So this was incorrect. Right, now that this thing is past the execute stage, we'll know which jump we're supposed to take. So then we can pass this into the fetch stage. So the solution for this would be to insert two nopes. So this is a control hazard caused by a jump. Let's see why we have control hazards caused by returning and calling functions. So let's say we are executing these three instructions right here, and this is a snapshot of the program counter and the addresses that it's pointing to. So program counter is originally pointing to this address, and it holds the RR move L. So then the second address is a return statement. And when we return, we are returning to some other address, right? when we're executing in a program all you're doing is hopping around in memory right? you just have ones and zeros stored at different addresses and those ones and zeros happen to be instructions so in our pipeline we have been incrementing the program counter by saying val p equals pc plus two or however long the instruction is when we return we're going to jump to some other spot in memory we're not going to move to PC plus 2. We're going to move to some completely different address. Right? 0x51370. And this is where the next instruction will be stored. So what we can do is stall our pipeline until the return instruction has enough time to get this address and update valp. All right, now that we know that, let's see if we can make some sense out of this problem. So this shows our different stages, right? Fetch, this is the fetch stage, decode, execute, memory, and write back. So let's get rid of these guys and see if we can make some sense of this. So the problem says, read the code and pick out possible issues in terms of data and control, data and control hazards. So let's take a look at this. We've got EBX and EDX here, 
and then the third line adds these two registers. This creates a data hazard. Right? Because earlier we said we need three nopes included before this 10 gets moved into EBX, right? Until it's actually written in the write back stage. So as you can see, there's only one and then two instructions before we use EBX again. So 10 isn't in this register. And the same reason for EDX, 5 isn't in this register either. So this creates a data hazard. And then again, for the same reason, we use EBX right here. And follow, directly following it, we try to use a memory to register move L that includes the value that is supposed to be in EBX. This creates a data hazard. For the same reason, we try to put 10 in EDX. We try to use EDX. This creates a data hazard. So calling a function with no spaces, this creates a control hazard. This is the same reason for the return is it deals with uh, grabbing the value of the new address and having to update the program counter. And then if you look here we move ESI to EDI and then we try to do something with EDI directly after that but we know ESI isn't written to EDI until the write back stage so this creates a data hazard. Now if you look down here there is a return from my function so this creates a control hazard because there's no spaces uh, and again this has to deal with updating the program counter to the correct address and needing time for that to happen in our pipeline sweet so as you can see, this problem is not very difficult. It's just, do you understand data hazards and do you understand control hazards? They're pretty easy to pick out once you know what they are.